An engineering department is designing a rectangular box with a volume of 640 cubic feet and a bottom whose length is twice its width. If the cost per square foot for the bottom is 25 cents, for the top is 12.5 cents, and for the sides it's 5 cents, what dimensions will minimize the cost? Let's draw a picture of the bags that we want to manufacture. So we want to manufacture a box with a bottom base whose length is twice its width. So if we let the width to be equal to x, then our length will be equal to 2x. And let's say that the height of this box is equal to h. Solving optimization problems may be divided into two steps. The first step is to write your objective function in terms of a single variable. When we say objective function, it's the quantity that you want to maximize or minimize. In this case, we want to minimize the cost, so that is our objective function. It's the cost function. And we want to write that in terms of a single variable. Of course, if you are in single variable calculus. And we should also determine the domain that we want to consider for our variable. And the second step is to apply maximum and minimum principles to find the maximum or minimum value of that objective function. So let's apply that procedure in solving this problem. The goal of this problem is to find the minimum cost. So we're given different cost per square foot for the bottom. So that is 25 cents per square foot for the top and then for the sides. So let's try to write down the cost in terms of a single variable, okay, as a function of a single variable. So here we have the area. The area of the bottom is, of course, 2x times x, so that is equal to 2x squared. And since the cost is 25 cents per square foot, then the cost for the bottom of this box will be 25 times 2x squared. Now, the top also has an area of 2x squared. And since the cost per square foot for the top is 12.5 cents, then the cost for the top of this box will be 12.5 times 2x squared. Now, let's look at the total area of the four sides okay so here we have the front face and then the back face of this box so the area of this front face will be 2x times h and then that is times 2 so plus the back face you'll get this total area which is 2 times 2hx now this right face and left face have the same area and the area is h times x so times 2 will get 2 times h times x and since the cost per square foot for the sides is 5 cents then the cost for the four sides is 5 times this uh, expression now let's simplify this a little bit so we'll get here 50 x squared and then this one is equal to 25x squared, and this is 5 times 6hx, so that is equal to 30hx. So we combine these two, we'll get 75x squared plus 30hx. Now, the first step is to write our objective function as a function of a single variable. So we still have here h and x. So we need to write this in terms of x only or h only. So how do we do that? Here we, we have an additional information that the rectangle rectangular box should contain a volume of 640 cubic feet. So from this information, we can write this volume here, which is equal to 640 cubic feet, as 2x squared h. So that is length times width times height. That is the volume of this box. And it must be equal to 640 
So therefore, we can write our h in terms of x, and that is equal to 640 divided by 2x squared, that is equal to 320 over x squared. So now, we replace this h here by this expression, and we'll get 75x squared plus 30 times this expression times x. So now, we were, uh, were able to write our c as a function of a single variable x, and it is equal to this expression. So I factored out the common factor 15 so that we can easily differentiate this later. And what is our domain here for the variable x? So since the volume must be equal to 640, x cannot be equal to 0 in this case because if x is equal to 0, the volume will be equal to 0. So our domain is x greater than 0. Let us now find the x that maximizes this function here. So since the domain is not a closed interval, we cannot use the closed interval method. So uh, we can only use here the other maximum minimum principle. And that is actually the first derivative test or second derivative test. So take note that if there is only one critical number, then from the first derivative test and second derivative test, our conclusion will be absolute extremum. It's like absolute or global minimum or absolute or global maximum. So that is true only when you have a single critical number in your domain. So in this case, so we look for critical numbers first for this function. So we take the derivative. So by definition of a critical number, it's an element of your domain where the derivative is zero or does not exist. So we compute for derivative and we'll get here constant. We just copy the constant and the derivative of this expression is 10x. And then just think of this one as move the x here as x raised to negative 1 so that you can easily take its derivative. So the derivative of this one will be negative 640 x raised to negative 2. And you may write that as 640 over x squared. Now, c prime doesn't exist only when x is equal to 0, but x equals 0 is not part of our domain. So therefore, that can't be a critical number of c. So to find the critical numbers, we just equate c prime of x to 0. And this is equal to 0. When this factor is equal to 0, then that means this 10x is equal to 640 over x squared. So we have here 10x equal to 640 over x squared. Cross multiply, we'll get 10x cubed equal to 640. Divide both sides by 10, we'll get x cubed equal to 64. And then taking cube root of both sides, we'll get x equal to 4. And this is the only critical number of C. So therefore, if we're going to apply first derivative test or second derivative test, our conclusion will be not only a local minimum or a local maximum, but it will be a global or absolute maximum or global or absolute minimum. Now, how do we determine whether this critical number uh, will give us uh, absolute max or absolute mean. So we look for the second derivative. So the second derivative of this one, so taking the derivative again, so we'll get here 15, just copy the constant, and the derivative of this factor is 10 and then plus 1280 over x cubed. So it is clear that for any x greater than 0, our second derivative is always greater than 0. So that means by second derivative test, since c prime of 4 is equal to 0 and c double prime of 4 is greater than 0, by second derivative test, you have a local minimum at x equals 4. But since 4 is the only critical number of c, we are sure that this c of 4 is the absolute minimum. So therefore, C of 4 is the minimum cost. 
So our answer to this problem, since we're looking for the dimensions that minimizes the cost, so the dimensions that minimize the cost are our length, which is equal to 2x, so that is equal to 2 times 4, so 8 feet, and then our width, which is actually x, that is equal to 4 feet, and our height, which is a 320 over x squared, is equal to 20 feet. If you're looking for the minimum cost, then you just plug in this x value into your function to get the minimum cost. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to help me grow this channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.